Hello friends, this is Andrea from Drea's Bears. Welcome back to my channel. Today um, I'm finally getting around to filming uh, a tutorial on something I had promised a little while ago. Um, so uh, a few months ago I had made this really cool um, flip out uh, sort of, I guess it would be like a pocket almost, a pocket of pockets and flip outs and flip flaps. Um, and I have a video uh, on on the flip through of a flip through of this, um, and I did say that once I reach 200 subscribers, that I would go ahead and do a tutorial. Um, now I'm at just a little over 300, and I still haven't had a chance. Well, I'm just getting a chance now to create uh, the tutorial video for you. So this is um, has two flip out. Um, sort of policy closures with flips and flaps, pockets in the center um, with lots of places to hold ephemera and then on the inside here is a pocket and I had created a journal to go inside. So we're going to do the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, the tutorial will cover everything. So I'm just going to read you out a list of things that you need. I'm just going to preface this also by saying I won't be using this kit. This kit is from Debrina Pratt um, on Etsy. She's known as Pixie Dust Files, one of my favorite digital designers. Um, I'm going to be doing an Alice in Wonderland one. So uh, I'm just going to set this off to the side and I thought I'd give you a rundown of, pardon my chicken scratch writing, uh, some of the, the supplies that you'll need to do the project and I'll let you know which things are optional or anything really is optional. You just use what you have. So um, I have one and a half file folders. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, I have one file folder in its entirety and then you need half. So either the front portion torn off or the back portion torn off of another, a second one. So you need one full closing one and one half of one. Uh, the half one is going to be the, um, the cover for the, what becomes the journal eventually. So you need one full one for the pocket and one to be the journal. Uh, the green hanging file folders, I think, I'm not really entirely sure what they're called, but these are the things, this one has the metal bars taken out of it already, but it's these green file folders. They're nice and sturdy and they have hinges on them already and we're going to use them uh, specifically for those hinges so we don't have to create new ones. Uh, papers to cover things in any theme you want. So I have uh, really cool Alice in Wonderland pages here that I'm going to be using today. Um, string for binding your journal. So I have um, some string for my journal, but also for the policy closures. So if you have something that you generally like to use, that's perfect. Uh, this is just Baker's twine that I got from Michael's. Um, I happened to get this one on sale. They don't sell the small rolls anymore. I'll see if I can grab it out here. This is a gold version. They don't seem to, in my Michaels anyway, sell these smaller versions. So I had to grab what I could. They only had two left. Um, this and then the, the plain white one. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to find it now. And um, anyways, so that is what I'm using. But you could use embroidery floss, you could use yarn, whatever you normally would use, or if you don't have a normally, um, any of those options are great. It just needs to be a fairly strong um, string just so that it'll take a bit of um, pulling. So I have, for example, some crochet yarn that's vintage, and if I pulled on it too hard, it would just fray. So obviously I can't use that if I'm going to be tugging on it in any way. So string for binding, uh, miscellaneous envelopes, tags. Um, I have these really fun, uh, so there's some shipping tags. There's some pockets left over from an old Alice in Wonderland project I've done in the past. Um, I love, I think I said in my last video, I love airmail envelopes. So I'm going to use one of those and it kind of goes with the, the sort of whimsical theme. I found these really great uh, vintage envelopes. Um, I have a uh, a time card here uh, that I'll probably fold up and use as a little tuck spot. And these really fun, super skinny envelopes. I think, I'm not sure what their measurements are. I think they are about eight, eight and an, about eight by two and three quarters ish. Yeah. So I found these at a charity shop um, and I bought all I could find. I just really like the size of them because they're so unique. 
So we want a bunch of those, doesn't matter what size, uh, as long as it's gonna fit within your flaps, you don't want it to be, you know, you don't wanna have an envelope that's this big and have your flip, your um, your closure only being this big, right? So they can always be cut down though, and I can show you how to do that. Um, fabric, I put wash tape, but I mean washi tape. I'll grab my little pencil and put an eye there. Fabric or washi tape to create hinges for the flips and flaps. So I have um, just an old piece of, uh, I don't know, this is probably an old curtain at one point, a cotton curtain, um, just to create the hinges for the flips and folds. You can also just use paper, like tea stain paper, regular paper. Um, you can use what's left of the green file folder. Uh, your favorite glue, I'm going to be using a couple of different ones. Um, so we'll, we'll see how they work. They're not the ones that I normally use, but I really... I don't have anything else, so <laughs> there we go. And then scissors or a paper cutter. So if you have a large paper trimmer, you can use that. Handheld scissors are great. You could even use a ruler for tearing. That's not my favorite one because it just doesn't make the lines crisp enough when we're talking about certain parts of it. A pencil and a ruler because you're going to need to measure some things. Now, if you want to do policy closures like I've done here, um, then you're going to need a one inch punch. Well, that's what I've used anyway. So this is a one inch punch, circle punch. Um, and you'll need these little brads, uh, just to make them sit up. They are optional. I'm sure there are, I'm sure I'll experiment with other ways to, uh, close this. I just hadn't thought about that yet. Um, optional sewing machine. Um, you don't have to sew. You can do this entirely by gluing. There's really only one portion that I've sewn anyway, or I will be sewing in this, and I've already done that ahead. Um, ribbons uh, or string to close the journal, like to wrap around the journal, so you can see that here. Um, this, oops, I grabbed all the other papers as well that I have with it. Um, so just, I have some string here. Or this is like a cloth ribbon um, that I just used to tie. And with that, you will also need, if you're going to use that kind of closure, you'll need eyelets and an eyelet setter. So I have a crocodile big bite, um, which of course I can't find right now because I'm looking for it, but we don't need it just yet. And uh, yeah, your eyelets and your setter. And then I think there's one thing, yeah, string for binding your journal. We already covered that. So that's a list of everything that you need. I'm also going to list it below in the description box so that you don't have to stop and write this down. But if you've already done that, that's great. So let's go from the very beginning now. This is probably really my first tutorial of something that I've fully created on my own. So please bear with me if I'm a little bit um, off, <laughs> I'm going to do my best. So what I've done here is I took my, my regular file folder, um, and I did this ahead just so that I wouldn't have to stop the camera to go off and do the sewing, but it was just a plain yellow file folder. And when I need to tea stain something quickly, I like the texture and the sound that it makes when it's tea stained. So I tend to always want to tea stain my folders. I really, when I need it quick, I just take a, a tea bag, I wet it, rub it all over what I need. It soaks into the paper really nicely. I generally will set my tea stain papers in front of a fan and let them dry. That's what I did with this one yesterday. So it's all ready to go. So if you want it to be tea stained, that's how you would do it. Uh, then I just added some glue along the sides to close it. Let that dry. Um, I'm using, today I'm going to be using this um, Elmer's Craft Bond. Um, it's a clear glue and it's got a double tip. It has uh, a wider tip, kind of reminds me of the old school glues when I was a kid on one end here. And then it has a fine tip on the other, which I kind of like. Um, so I use the fine tip to add glue on the side. And then just to be sure that um, as, as I'm going in and out and I'm gonna, the journal will be quite probably chunky knowing me. So I've just sewn it to add some extra um, strength to this the seams here. So that part is already done. Now I'm going to find my, this part here. So this is, oh no, that's my front flaps. I don't want that. Just pardon me while I find everything I need in the order that I need it. That's the inside. Okay. So this part here is my, my background. Let's see if I got the right part. 
yes this is going to be my background page so this is the the page that's going to sit on top of the cover here so what we're going to do is is get it done get it made first before we attach anything we're not really going to attach anything for a bit until we get into our file folders or sorry our flips and things so what I did here um, in my previous uh, gosh I wish I had a bigger space <laughs> in my previous uh, project what I used here was um, uh, this is like a transparency like an overhead projector um, transparency plastic that you would use for um, you know, overhead projections back in the day. I'm not going to use that for this one because it does require a lot of sewing. And I want to show you how you can do this if you don't love sewing paper, if you don't know how to sew paper, or if you just don't have a sewing machine. So what I did for this inside portion is, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I've got all the, that's my journal cover. I have all the things in the world here. Um, is I've created or I've printed two of the same here and the reason I did that is I'm going to use the bottom portion of this copy of the one I'm using to create the pockets so there's not going to be a break in the image I, I thought that would be kind of neat so it's going to look like the same image all the way down except I will just crop a piece off here and that'll be my pockets um, and then it will just kind of all look the same. So the first thing I need to do here is I have some light-ish cardstock. It's not super strong. And I'm going to glue this to, actually, I think, yeah, no, I'll use my, I'm going to use my tacky glue and I'm going to get my fingers very dirty. I hope I have a paper towel standing by. I do very good. And there's that. Good. All right, so I did have everything super, super organized and my list and everything all labeled and nice. And now I've just got it in a big pile <laughs> over to my right. So I'll move this out of the way here so you can see because I'm gluing white on white. So I'm just going to put um, a fair amount. I'm going to go around the edges. I don't go too close to the edges because I'm actually going to spread this out with my fingers just to make sure it gets sort of spread down really well. I'm getting to the end of this. I have been making journals like crazy over the last couple of weeks. I'm getting ready for my first live show in probably two years. And I'm worried, even though I have about 30 journals, I'm worried that I'm not going to have enough or the right kind of journal. So I just keep making when I have ideas. And uh, the, the show is called Fantasy in the Forest. Uh, it's in Kingston, Ontario, or near Kingston, Ontario. It's in Perth Village, actually. And it's an absolutely beautiful show. It's been running for many, many years. And I used to do it a long time ago um, with my bears. And um, then I just found doing outdoor shows was very difficult. I was having some difficulty. I had hurt my ankle. I have um, something called Achilles tendinopathy from a dance injury. And honestly, I don't know if I've ever told anyone, but um, I am a, a ballet dancer um, and a ballet teacher. Just making sure that I got that almost close. I didn't quite get it to the edge, but let's not be too picky today. So, um, but the, surprisingly, I didn't do it while I was dancing. I did it while I was, um, well, I mean, I was dancing, but I was out celebrating my, I think my 30th birthday. <laughs> And I was salsa dancing and I had a really bad twist of my ankle where my foot stuck to the floor and I turned and my ankle just popped. Um, and it just so happened that about two weeks after that, I had um, a show with a contemporary, a local contemporary company. So I rested as much as I could, performed in the show, had it looked at, and now here we are. So um, that, that kind of put a... A stop to a lot of the um, outdoor shows uh, that I was able to do. I really needed shows that I could do that were kind of inside and I could sit a lot and I wasn't on unstable ground. So now that's glued down. So uh, that's why I'm out of glue. That was my long ranting story about the reason why I'm out of all the glues I usually use. 
Um, normally I'll use a, an Uhu glue stick. Um, sometimes I'll use art glitter glue, but it's really hard for me to get in Canada, especially during the winter months. They don't want to send it up to Canada because if it freezes, then it becomes completely unusable. So now I've got this glued down. I'm just going to cut along the edges just to make it nice and clean. So I teach ballet. That's what I do full time. Um, and then I'm an artist also full time, which is kind of a funny thing to say. But I think once you're a creative person, you kind of always are a creative person. So these are the things that I choose to do. So they make me happy. And recital is coming up in about a week and a bit. Today is uh, Sunday. So right now our studio is at competition. And I went for a couple of days or went down for one of the days, uh, but wasn't able to stay. I needed to get home and start doing some making. So this is now going to be the part that it's glued down. Now, if you wanted to, for extra effect, you could absolutely sew around this. I'm Like I said, I'm not going to do any extra sewing. So this will eventually sit right on top here. I'm not going to glue that down because we've got a lot of other things. I don't know if you can hear the crow outside my window. He's calling. I don't think he can see me, but he's awfully loud. So uh, this is going to sit on top. We will have other things that we need to tuck underneath, like the extra little flaps and so on. So we're going to leave that, set it aside for now. Um, if you wanted to let the, gl the glue dry a little bit longer, you could, but I'm not that patient of a person. So there it is. That part is done. We won't need this section for a while. I'm not going to do the pockets on the front just yet. So the next thing I want to work on is, I think I'm going to do, let me just grab my, oh, excuse me for the squeaky chair. I'm so sorry. Um, I think I'm going to do this portion next. So I'm skipping ahead. So we've done the back part here. Now I'm going to do the front flap. So I'll grab my sample here. I'm going to do the front flaps. So these, these flip outs here. So I'm just decorating this part and I'll show you why I like to use this green file folder. I'm going to set this down so I don't put it in the wrong spot. So the front cover, now what I did here, because I wanted it to be a bit more sturdy, but save time again, I just glued it to some cardstock. Just again, it's very flimsy cardstock, um, and this was printed on the Epson Premium paper. So it's a little thicker premium photo paper. It's not as thin as the regular just premium paper. This was the, or sorry, the regular photo paper. This is a little bit thicker, um, but I still wanted more structure because they're going to be handled. So I put them on that. Now what we do here, I'm going to go from. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is just tear this. I hope I'm mostly on screen. I have a very small work surface and it's difficult for me to get the whole area in. So I'm hoping that I'm getting all of this and I'm not going to find out, you know, after I've filmed the whole thing that <laughs> it didn't work. Fingers crossed, everyone. So because I need this to open this way, I'm going to cut it down the middle. I'm not going to bother getting my paper cutter. I'm hoping that this is a nice straight line. And what I need to do is actually take a little bit off the edges, just a tiny little bit, just so that they don't bang into each other when the closure happens. So I'm just honestly, so you can see, I'm just taking a tiny sliver off. I don't want to take too much off the original image. And I tend to get a little, a little bit more on one side than the other, but I think I did pretty good there. So just a bit so that when they close, they don't butt into each other or overlap. I learned that the hard way, I can tell you. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm sure, I'm not sure if you can see, if I show you from this side, you can see the little um, sort of, uh, what do you call them, score marks here. Um, and what I'm going to do is glue this right up close to the first, oh, there's my crow again. Um, glue this right up to the first score mark here. So I'll show you again. I'm going to glue it up to this one, but on the dark green side, because I want the dark green to show as um when I glue it together, when I assemble the whole thing. 
So we'll go ahead and do that. And again, I'll use my tacky glue. There we go. I hope everyone's having a really great weekend. It's uh, kind of toasty here. It's not really super hot, but it's definitely humid. I can feel the humidity. It's been raining a lot. I think yesterday and today were the first days that we didn't have rain in almost a week. And um, I finally got to plant my veggies in my raised veggie garden. So that was nice. We've got a, a lot of lettuce and a lot of tomatoes. We're a half Italian family, so we've got to have those tomatoes for sure. Um, but it's been kind of a nice, a nice weekend as far as uh, sunshine goes. It's been really, really lovely. There we go. So I've spread that out and I will set that. I'm going to try and line up the bottom so that's a little less cutting that I have to do. And press that down. I'm going to grab my, oh, where did I put my paper towel? I always do that to myself. There it is. I covered it up. There. So I want it to be glued pretty well on this side uh, because it's the side that's going to be, well, I want it to be glued pretty well on all of the sides. Um, because, you know, like I said, we're going to be handling it quite a lot. <laughs> I always get random bits of string and stuff stuck to my hands when I do it this way. Some, uh, if you don't like touching the glue, you can use, of course, I don't have um, a card handy. Oh, I'm going to, I have to apologize again for the squeaky chair. I'm so sorry. But if you have um, something like this, like a, a gift card, um, one of my, one of my students just gives me her blank gift card so that I can, you know, use it to sort of burnish down the pieces, but you could do the same with the glue on the back. You could use this as a spreader for the glue. Uh, a lot of people do that. I just like to get my hands in there because that's just who I am. Making things harder than they need to be really is what I'm trying to say. So once that's glued down, I'm going to let that just dry for a moment. Now this, honestly, if this was a, if you're a sewer, this would be a really good thing to sew. Um, so it doesn't flip up on you. And now I've got to find my other piece. I'm sorry, I'm turning my head away from the camera. I hope that doesn't make it difficult to hear me. Um, and of course I had it sitting neck against my glass of water, so it just got a little bit wet. Um, and now this one, we have to be, oh, I did it wrong, didn't I? <gasps> Silly Miss Andrea. Okay, I'm going to have to do this over again. Oh, I'm so silly. I did it upside down. Okay, so I'm going to do this again. See, that's what happens when you talk and crap. So I know this looks horrible. It's not as bad as it seems. I'm just going to take that off. <laughs> and I'm going to have to get rid of, I think, this part. Oh, maybe I don't need to. Maybe I can. How did that happen? That's very strange. Um, I will grab another one. I do have another one of these somewhere. See, even people who make things every day still make mistakes. So I'm just going to tear this one in half. This one still has the hangy thing in it. Uh, so what I actually should have done on this side, oh, you know, sometimes I need adult supervision. <laughs> but it's still going to work just fine. So what happened was this is my center and these, I want them to flip this way. So I should have glued it. So my hinges were on this side because that's the way it's going to open. I could have just rescued it by adding hinges, but I didn't, I didn't think I panicked instead of thinking. So I'm going to go ahead and try and salvage this guy. Thank goodness. It's called junk journaling. Um, for this portion, I'm going to use my Elmer's glue just because it's easy to spread. There, you can see how nicely it spreads out. So that chunk can go back on. Whoops. There we go. Oh boy. All right. So that's glued back together. Now I've got to, again, make sure I do this on the right the correct side. So I need this because this is the right side of my flap. I've got to make sure that my hinges are on the right side. And I don't mean right as incorrect, although I 
him implying that as well. Okay, take two. Take two. If I knew how to edit, I'd probably edit that part out. But uh, then you'd look at the back of this and go, hey, what happened there? That looks a bit strange. So I'd essentially be ratting myself out anyways. But getting down a good chunk of glue, a little bit more. You know what's scaring me is I'm almost out of this glue too. <laughs> I may have to go, I might have to go into town and do some glue shopping. There, okay, I'm gonna spread that out again. Whoopsie. Let's not mess up anything else, Andrea. Make sure it gets right to the edges. At least I know it was really glued down well the first time. Just hadn't dried yet. Okay, so now I'm going to glue this right against that first hinge there. There we go. And I'm going to set that down. Now, because I've done some silly things here, what I'm going to do is actually put it on the floor and put a heavy book on top of it just to make sure those edges don't curl up because now I've made it a little bit thinner than it was. So just excuse me as I turn away from the camera and I, my squeaky chair comes out again. And here is a nice heavy book. You're gonna hear a bit of a thud. There we go. All right, so now we can do this one the right way. So this needs to open to the left, so I want my hinges on the left. Now, of course, if you're using non-directional paper, this is not going to be an issue for you. It might, <laughs> I just hope it doesn't scare you off of using directional paper. But at least you can see now that it can be fixed. You know, everything can be fixed. The worst case scenario is I reprint the paper and I just start that side all over again. You know, cut it in half. No problem. Everything can be fixed and managed. Good. Adding some more glue here. Good, hopefully that's enough. Okay. Whoopsie. There, spreading that out. Now it doesn't matter if I get glue on the file folder because I'm gonna be cutting around, um, cutting around and I'm gonna use a little bit more. Um, and even even if I wasn't, the glue dries clear. This one doesn't have much of a gloss to it, so you wouldn't really notice too much. But I don't need to be too picky for this. Unless it's absolutely driving you crazy, then you go ahead and do what makes you happy. Here is there my left side, lining it up on the bottom, lining it up with the hinge wipe off my fingers a little bit and then I'll use this to just press it down. Good. Now if you were going to sew this definitely wait until the glue is mostly dry or completely dry so you probably want to wait I don't know this stuff dries pretty quickly um, if you want to be extra safe let it dry for a couple of hours let's see if there's directions on the bottle here. Test for best results, not intended for washables or wearables. Doesn't really say how long it takes. Uh, it does grip pretty nicely. Um, and I like this version of, of the bottle because it's, the tip is stored upside down. So your, your glue is always at the bottom ready to use. So you don't have to shake it and go all silly doing the glue dance, trying to get the glue to the tip of the bottle. And uh, anyway, so what I was saying is I would wait probably... I don't know, at least an hour, maybe longer if you are worried, um, but we shouldn't be using good needles with paper anyways. So make sure you have a, a needle that you use for paper. And if you're a sewer, a needle that you use for, um, for your fabric or if, if possible, a totally different sewing machine altogether. Um, but you don't want, the reason is you don't want the glue to get gummed up on the needle. That's going to make your projects a little bit hard to sew. Well, that's why. So I'm just going to put this under that heavy book again and let them both dry for just a bit, just a few moments, just because I, I went, I put them through all that stress, the poor things. So just looking ahead here, I have my additional papers. 
and my extra envelopes and things. Now I did have a lovely list of the order of things that I was going to do. And of course, because it's me, I don't know where I put it. My cat did jump up here just before I was ready to film. So he knocked a few things over, silly bean. So these are um, just extra pages that I've got that I'm going to use for decorating the envelopes. I'm just gonna set them up on the side here. This is going to be my journal cover. I'm gonna move this out of the way here. I'll set those side guys over too. I know that when I move in certain areas, I'm not in camera shot, so I'm trying my best to make sure I stay in camera shot. This is going to be the journal cover. So I think we might as well just go ahead and prepare it because it's going to need some time to, to dry as well. So I'm going to need now, again, I could, what will happen here is I'll fold this in half. I've already pre-folded it. Um, and this is going to be the journal cover like so. However, well, there's a couple of things I could do. I could just glue this right to the center here down the seam and fold it in half. My image won't make it right to the edge here. So that's a possibility, or I could cut it down the middle and center this and center this. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. My first one I didn't, you can see here, I just laid it straight across and then I did sew around it. Um, but I think what I'll do is cut mine down the middle for the next one, for this one here. And then I'll show you how that's done essentially done the same way, only there's less of a chance of me making a mistake. Ha ha ha. I'm sure I'll still find a way. Might be my superpower, I'm not sure. So here's, here's the front cover. Um, and you can see it kind of, I don't know if you can see it very well, it does kind of poke over a little bit here. Um, I'm gonna, I'll just cut that off with some scissors to round it, or to make sure it's going in, in the same line as the folder here. So there's that. Um, I did bring some cheesecloth with me because I do kind of like the texture of it being underneath. So let's see if I have a big enough piece. Otherwise I might have to go hunting. But or I could just use a portion and just lay it out underneath here so it just kind of peeks out the edge. like so. Yeah, I could do that. And I think what I'm going to do, um, just because the, uh, this is tea stained, the folder is tea stained, but the uh, cheesecloth that I grabbed is not, I'm just going to take my distress ink. So this is, um, Tim Holtz vintage photo distress ink. And I'm just going to find here, I can use the back of my Oh, look, it's my order sheet <laughs> and all of my supplies needed. I'm just going to use that since we've talked about that already and just sort of rub it on, give it some aged look there. You can see that it's turning a little bit more brown. So it has a bit more of a vintage look. So you don't need to tea stain anything if you don't want to, if you have access to the ink, but you don't need the ink either. You know, some people like the white look of the cheesecloth. Depends on really what you're making, I think. If it has a vintage, if your images or the style that you're making has a vintage feel, this really does help um, sort of with the atmosphere of that. But if you're doing something like a shabby chic would also still be really nice with the white. I think I don't do a lot of that. I'm trying to get into that a bit more. I shouldn't say I don't do a lot of that. I think I actually do. I don't realize it. I think that's what I mean to say. There. That should do for now. So setting my little roly-poly sponge down. So moving that out of the way. And I'm going to cut a chunk of this off. It's still a bit white, but there's still some nice color to it. Let's go this way. Sometimes it can be a bit persnickety to handle and I probably will end up um, cutting off some of these, these ruled edges, but let's just see how that looks if I put that down there. So we have the cheesecloth kind of coming out the side. 
fluff it up at the top. That's the part that I'll probably cut. Fluff it up out of the bottom. Yeah, I think that's, that's all right. My cat's scratching at the door. I closed it because everyone's home today. It's Sunday. And, uh, you know, sometimes people just pop in and start having random conversations with you. So I thought I better close my door. But now Kitty's upset. He doesn't like it when I'm hidden away. So now just adding some glue. Sorry, I should move that out of the way. Just adding some glue here. Um, I'm not going to glue down the cheesecloth because this will this glue will go right through and glue it directly down. Um, I'm not going to smoosh this one with my fingers, um, partially because I need the glue to stay a little bit raised so that it will in fact go through, whoops, excuse me, it will in fact go through the cheesecloth. I know I might have done some of that off camera, I apologize. All right, so let's position this and hope for the best, everyone cross your fingers. And we are, Sort of down. There we go. Now we're down. There. So I'll press that quite firmly. Now you don't have to go through all of this. If you want it to be a faster project, you don't need to go with the cheesecloth. I'm just going to cut this here. Don't know if I'll have enough to do the back portion be honest with you. But let's see. It does stretch out pretty well, so I might be able to run it just along the side. Or I might just leave it and make that a cover feature. I think I will. I think I'll just leave the cheesecloth on the front. I know that seems a little bit unbalanced, but I kind of am big on asymmetry. I don't always love things to be very samey. adding some glue to here. So again, this is just the cover of the journal. And I know this might seem a little bit discombobulated in the sense that I'm doing things in an odd order, but because of the glue needing to dry, this is kind of what we need to do. But with the wonder of YouTube, you can always just pause and fast forward and move to the sections you want to do and rewind and go back to the others that you're ready for. All right, I'm just spreading this out to the edges a little bit more. I don't want to get too much glue all over things, but it's going to happen anyway because it's me. And try and set that down. It's a little bit hard because I can't put my head in the way here. There we go. That one down. Get the glue off my finger. Press down here. Make sure I get the edges pressed down here. Oops. And wipe up the glue that I put everywhere else. Ta-da! So that is going to be our journal cover. Um, to be honest, I think I will probably go ahead and sew this just so that it's held down nicely, but that's going to happen a little bit later. So I, when I come back with this, you'll see that it's sewn down because that glue needs to dry. I just like the, the, the texture that sewing gives and it just looks, I don't know, there's something about sewing on paper that, I don't know, it's so, it's so unusual, it's different. You don't really think about, oh, sewing on paper, that seems a bit odd, but I do like the way that it looks. So I will for the cover of that, but I am really happy with that, with the way that that looks as a cover. Well done, well done me. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not gonna cut that yet. I'll get up to that in a little bit. So let's check my little to-do list here. So we've done our back page. We've done, um, oh yes, we should probably do our bottom pockets now. So let me just see where we are at. Again, I'm so sorry about the squeaky chair. It's an old one. It was in my studio when I had a studio long ago. Uh, I closed it in 2017 and now I'm working at another studio in my city, which is kind of nice. I think anyone who's ever owned a business probably knows that there is quite a lot of stress and um, pressure involved in making people happy. And uh, sometimes that can be difficult to do. So I just got to that point where I thought, you know, 
I have to start making me happy. I loved the teaching. I loved children. I, I loved everything. Uh, it was just the, the intense pressure of organizing, you know, recitals, which was still fairly fun. I was very organized, but, but the pressure of that and also doing, you know, trying to just please everyone was, was sometimes difficult, but I did love it. But I also really love not having to do that. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. All right. Sorry, again, squeaky chair. So here is this part. And I'm just trying to find the page because, you know, that's what I do. I'm just going to hit pause for a second. And I'm going to try and look for the page that goes with this. All right. I found it. It was literally right underneath the other one. That's why I couldn't find it. It was too easy. So this is the one on the cardstock. I'm just going to pop that in here so I don't get confused because clearly that happens. Now, I also stopped and grabbed my paper trimmer. I am going to use my paper trimmer for this. Um, I want my pockets, now that I've tucked that away, I'm going to take it back. I want my pockets to be, I don't know, maybe about an inch, two inches. I might actually go to the top of the teacup here across. I might do one a little bit taller and one a little bit shorter. So I think I'm going to go for the right side. I'll do the pocket up to the top, maybe just on the top of these um, hearts and diamonds and stuff. Oh, they're not hearts or diamonds, but the di the di they are diamonds and spades on the top of that. And then this one, I'm going to go a little bit lower just on top of the, the card here. So I'll have two different pockets. So first I'm just going to cut right across. I'll just cut right across the hole. Oh, maybe I won't. Let's see. Let's cut that in half. Let's just do that. Oop. And now, excuse me, again, I have such a small workspace. One day I'll have a big workspace. But you don't need a huge amount of room to be creative so don't feel that that's something that you need to do. I used to work in my living room. I still do sometimes. So that I think will do for the pocket. Now it's going to be pretty invisible so I am going to do I need to do something to make it a little easier to see but I also don't I like the illusion I know so okay I'm going to give you some tips some ideas if you want your pocket to be more visible you could put some washi tape across the top here I shouldn't have them so close here as you can put some washi tape across here so that it looks um, different so you're not it's not blending in quite so much like so so you can really see the difference. What I am going to do is grab one of my paper punches here. So I have a one and a half inch paper punch and I am going to punch out a little thumb hole here. Probably go to about, I'm just, honestly, I'm just guessing as to where the center is. There we go. And then I'll take my sponge with some of the the Tim Holtz distress ink on it and that helps it stand out just a little bit more um, but some of you might want it to be more obvious once things are tucked in it, you'll be able to see the pocket very well you just may have to search for it when you're doing uh, when you're initially putting things in I like creating these illusion pockets personally so I'm going to leave it just as it is. Sorry, I, I'm doing that thing where you're thinking and talking at the same time and I stop mid-sentence. I apologize. Sometimes that can be frustrating to listen to. So that's the first pocket. And then the second one, I'm going to make a wee bit shorter. So I will get my paper trimmer, which I put over here. And I'm going to cut it just above. This is a really cool paper trimmer. I got this at Michael's. Um, and it has a, a nice long um, ruler that folds out. And I just lost my sponge, of course. Um, but it also has, this is a scoring uh, tool. So you can use it to score things and measure them at the same time, which is really great. So if you don't want to buy a scoreboard and a paper trimmer, this one is Recollections. I'm positive they still sell it. Um, 
you can uh, you can get this and and have it all in one in one machine then you've got less things to worry about especially if you have a small space so i'm just going to cut oh i've got to make sure that is straight i cut the edges by scissors so it might not be perfectly straight but let's hope for the best i'm going to go a bit there oh see i didn't quite get it i still have some of the other the top line there so i'm going to just the angle that I cut things on. Anyways, so I'm going to get rid of that piece for now. Tuck that off to the side. And I can find my sponge. Excuse me, there's my head. Hi, everyone. <laughs> if you got me, I'm not sure. And that's the top portion. I'll put that away. Good. So I'm going to take my hole punch here. This is a one and a half inch punch that's about the smallest I like to use for pockets usually I'll use my two or two and a half inch punch because um, I like a nice wide uh, thumb hole but this just happens to be the one that I've got handy so I'm not gonna stress out about it and I will ink this as well I know the inking process can be dull to watch I'm trying to keep it as quick as possible but it really does make a difference it does help um, it helps the work look uh, a little bit more finished, I find. I never used to, and I, st I, I don't do it. I do it rarely now. I used to ink literally everything. If you saw my last video with the Dragonfly Dreams, I inked the heck out of the, the Dragonfly pages just to make it look really, really grungy and vintage. So here is the background that it's going to go on. So I'm going to put this here I want to try and line them up as best I can now I'm just going to check and see if they're going to bump into each other if they'll be okay I think they'll be okay perfect so I'll take my craft bond because it has the um the fine tip here and I'm just going to glue apologize I've got glue stuck to my thumbs and everything it looks a bit messy I apologize for that I'm doing a lot of apologizing Sorry, it's the Canadian in me, I think. So adding a little bit of glue along the, the sides here. I've got my thumb and my hand holding the side of the pocket that I don't want the glue, uh, just to make sure I don't have any, any uh, mistakes like I had before, where you glue it the wrong way around or you put glue in the wrong spot. This one would be a slightly harder one to recover from. Okay, I think that should do. And I'm going to turn it sideways so that I can get it, whoops, right lined up. Oh, I've got a little bit of the shakies today. Okay, I think that works. So I'm going to take, hold that down, and I'm going to press along the edges just to make sure that glue is really secured down. The page you can see is curling up a little bit, and that's okay because once I, once I glue it down, or once we glue it down, um, to the the file folder here that won't happen anymore it's just because there's sometimes with paper if you put glue on one side or if you wet it on one side and not on the other um, it will fold towards the side that is wet if you're ever wondering why that happens now this is the reason why I don't always use this glue because it does stay wet for a bit of time so just in trying to wipe that down again I moved the pocket I also find it very it's a funny feeling on my hands it's not as easy to get off but I'll stop complaining because I have glue I should be thankful that I have glue so prepping the other side just making sure it's going to be where I want it it looks fine excellent I do like the way that kind of is surprise and I think for an Alice in Wonderland that is a good idea you, know, you have to search for everything in Wonderland. And nothing is as it seems. Here we go. Oh, and along the edge here. Perfect. All right. Now I'll turn it sideways. I think I've got a little sneeze trying to happen here. So if I do, I apologize. I'm mumbling. I'm so sorry. Ah! Sometimes I forget you're not actually in the room with me and you can't hear me if I mumble. Okay. Put the lid on the glue here. 
like so. Pressing that down. And this, these I am, I will, because I'm not sure about this glue. I, this is literally the first time I've used it like this. I, I've been using it over the past week, but I'm not really sure that how the longevity of it is. So I may stitch around the pockets here and that will also make them stand out a little bit more. So, um, that will help also. So I think that's probably what I'm going to do, but just to show you what it will eventually look like on that front cover. It will sit like that, only not sticking up. There we go. Now, um, I'll go back to these guys. Now, these guys are still a little bit wet, but I'll cut them. I think I'll cut them out so I can show you how they're going to work. But I'm probably going to have to let them dry a little bit more. You can see this is the one that I just, I messed up. It's going to be a little bit wrinkly, but that's okay why it's called junk journaling and art I think sometimes doesn't always have to be super perfect if it did I think it would stop a lot of us from creating and sometimes in mistakes or unintended things uh, we find interesting ways to overcome them and they create new artistic pathways they they make us think outside the box a little how am I gonna fix this you know and then you're like oh well even though I didn't mean to do that, it, it worked out really well, so I'll probably do it that way again. I know I won't do this this way again. I'll make sure I check. And what's that, that phrase? Um, check twice, cut once. Or check twice, glue once is what I should, it'll be for me. So this here, I'm going to bring this back in. Um, so these hinges, I'm not sure how wide, I think I'm probably going to um, score it at two or fold it at two sections here. So I think I'll just, oh, here I am with all of the stuff in the way again. I'm so sorry. So I'm going to fold it on the second. So there's the, there's the, the back edge, then there's one score line and then there's the second score line and then there's two more coming towards the image. So I'm going to score it in this middle one here, or fold it rather, it's already scored in this middle one. There, like so. And then I'm going to also fold it, this is the one that got wet with my cup of water. So now I have this little uh, edge here, and this is going to allow, I'll grab my, prototype here if I can find it excuse me for a second this is going to allow or I'll show you this side this side worked out better uh, for room for all of the extra things to be fitting in there I made this one fairly small um, because I have a lot of Alice ephemera I will probably end up super stuffing this so I'm going to keep it kind of a little bit larger the original one I just moved on this first score line anyways so that is that and then I'm gonna do this side as well and then I'll show you how it all comes together so let me fold closest to the image and then I'm gonna fold that middle line there so there are I think five score lines in total so now they're both folded you can see like so there so what will happen is I will take this side I'm gonna clear this out of the way and it will fit underneath I'll just show you this way it will fit underneath here so I'll glue that up to the score line like so oops excuse me and then it will sit on top like so and then I'll do the same thing on this side and then there it is that's how it will that's what the front cover will end up ultimately looking like so the hinges are on the side so you won't you'll see, you won't really see anything in the sides and then it will flip open and this is where we're going to put the flips and flaps on this side here on these sides here this is finished now but we're not going to glue it down until these are finished because it does need to sit underneath they need to sit underneath this so I'm going to stop the video there um, only because there are a few other things that I need to prep I want these to dry a little bit more 
and um, I'm going to do a little bit of sewing, but I'm going to call this part one of the tutorial, and I promise I won't be long um, coming back with the second part. It'll really just be waiting for uh, this to dry. So this will, the second half, uh, assembling everything and getting the envelopes ready will be uh, part two. So there'll be two separate videos. So I hope that that was uh, easy to follow and I didn't talk too much. <laughs> Um, but uh, thank you for coming by and I hope uh, I really hope you do try making this if you do uh, please be sure to send me uh, pictures I would love to see them so thank you very much everyone and I will be back with part two shortly bye now